So, the new Mario Party came out. Super Mario Party! I was a little worried until I actually got my hands on it. And man, I'm super glad that Nintendo gave me a copy. So yeah, I'm just letting you know, yes, Nintendo gave me a copy of this game. I legally gotta tell you that. Rules be the rules. However, that will not influence my decision in this purely factual tier list. The newest, coolest feature I've found in this game is that it's actually fun compared to the previous Mario Party. No lame, weird gimmicks or redesign of the entire game like the last one. But also, one of the biggest changes is that each character now has their own dice block, unique to each person. Though of course, they can choose to use the standard dice block that everyone has if they want turn per turn also. But speaking of those dice blocks, this video was going to be talking about what dice are the best and what dice just kind of fall flat. Onto the bad sides, that is. So lots of math and probability being calculated today. Let's figure this out. Who is the top tier king of the dice? And does competitive Mario Party actually exist? Intro. 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 And for the example of how we're going to figure all this out, we're going to start off with the normal dice block. It has the sides 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You know, the basic block. Kind of easy to remember, it's the same as a normal die. So we're going to find the mean roll, meaning the average number rolled for the entire game. I'm taking you back to third grade. To find the mean or average, you take all the numbers you rolled and divide that by the number of turns over quite a few games. Or instead of writing all that down, you just do the math via basic probability and all that. Now, I also will be including my own strategies that I've picked up in my many years of Mario Party, along with what I've learned from my friends who always seem to beat me even though I'm super good at games. Mario Party just has that quality about it. Anyone can win. <laughs> so, let's get this ball... Uh, let's get this die rolling. Now, if you're savvy and noticed that this Mario Party is much shorter than the other Mario Parties, you'd be right. The boards are much smaller now. The normal die only has 6 instead of 10, and, as mentioned, each character can now choose between their own custom dice for this one. It's pretty neat. Also, obviously, we're going to make a tier list, which is more than just finding their mean or average roll. We're also going to find their standard deviation. Now, some of you weird data nerds out there probably know what that means, but all you really need to know is that the lower the standard deviation is, the more accurate the mean dice roll is, the more likely you are to actually get that. So then, the normal dice block's mean is 3.5, a number that is very common in a 1 to 6 dice roll. And it has a standard deviation of 1.71. For a die, that's not bad. And compared to everyone else's dice block, the normal dice block is about tier C, or lower Bs, in terms of where it is on our tier list. So used in conjunction with other dice, it can really excel. Similarly, other dice can benefit from the inclusion of a dice block that's normal. Well-rounded rolls, it's all strategy. So next, let's look at the main man Mario himself. His dice block has the sides 1, 3, 3, 3, 5, and 6 exactly what I would expect from our resident jack-of-all-trades Mario. I mean, it's pretty safe for a die layout. Slightly better payoff, but really it's not that great. Better to go 3 than to go 2 in most cases, but not so great to go 3 instead of 4. He really doesn't have anything that's crazy. So it's a good basic die, with an average roll count of 3.5. Yes, I know, there's no such thing as a roll of 3.5, but that's how math works. Also, his standard deviation is only 1.61, meaning he's a bit more standard than the actual normal dice block. In fact, he's more safe than the normal dice block, thanks to all those threes. Mario's final score on our tier list is B. Luigi's dice block has 1, 1, 1, 5, 6, and 7. Uh, at first glance, it's pretty bad, which isn't too far off for our second-rate brother here. He's got very little reward for the risk he's got. Now, I'm not saying his die is the worst. In fact, it's not even bad at all when you really get into Mario Party stats. When you have an ally who raises your roll, Luigi's dice can truly contend with some of the more heavyweight dice, but with almost no risk. I mean, his average roll count is 3.5. Again, same as Mario but his standard deviation this time is all the way up at 2.57. Also, you may be asking, wait, how could Luigi go 3.5 squares? His die doesn't even have a 3 at all. Well, the mean or average takes into account all movements, so over the entire course of the game. All those 1s that you roll, 
get balanced out by all the sixes and sevens that you roll. In turn, an average of 3.5 squares. See? It's not that complicated. Now our next dice block is much more difficult and a little harder to understand, but here, Luigi's final score is about a B. Peach's dice block has a 0, 2, 4, 4, 4, and 6. Oh! She's got a 0! This doesn't really throw a huge wrench into our plans, of course, but it will make our numbers much lower. So with her, we have a dice block that is slightly better than Mario's, but not great. Now, you might think that with her 0, she has to be bottom tier, right? Well, no, actually. Because 0 is actually incredibly important in play. You see, Super Mario Party is actually quite the tactile game, with its maps being much shorter and smaller. Many have considered small numbers to be superior in certain regards, as long as that small number happens to be zero. So rolling lower is not actually all that bad, and rolling zero can very commonly be a good thing. A strategy. The term is coined as stalling, but stalling can be much more helpful in certain situations. One possibility is that waiting will allow someone else to take the star that's further up ahead than they're already ahead, and then because you're waiting behind, when the star moves, it's in front of you now. The next star is right in front of you, the staller. Or maybe you are trying desperately to activate a few special spots, because every time you roll your die, even if you hit zero, and don't move, you still activate the space you end on. So you could, in theory, keep gaining coins or even special event spaces if you just keep rolling zero. So it's not to say that Peach's dice block is bad because of the zero. No, in fact, it is better because of it. It allows you to have a chance at stalling. That is, if you don't have any allies who always ruin my cunning plan to keep getting more allies. Peach's final score then is A, due to her ability to stall and her base roll of 3.33 with a standard deviation of 1.89. Daisy's dice block has three, 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 four, and four. At first you'd think, wow, no stall? We just talked about how amazing stalls are. She must be pretty bad. But I mean, then again, look at that spread of numbers. So perfectly balanced, just the right amount of negative with positive. She has a mean roll of 3.33, another very common roll in this video, but because of her die only having two different numbers in this way, we see that her standard deviation is only 0.47, the most accurate reading in Super Mario Party. And with such consistency, along with a good chance to hit 4 and 6 space slots, which is a very common distance between safe blocks, along with the ability to hit those 3 squares, which may be more risky, but with a much better reward, she lands in A tier next to Peach. Yoshi's dice block has 0, 1, 3, 5, 5, and 7. So again, we have the spooky 0, but we got a few higher rolls this time with the 5, 5, 7. Yoshi's dice block then is both good and bad. Well, actually it's pretty bad. In fact, Yoshi's dice block isn't really able to hit any event spaces, which is a pretty big problem when you think about what we just talked about with the 4-6 space distribution. So without that, and with its mean roll of 3.17 with a standard deviation of 2.34, means that Yoshi is our first and one of the few F-tier dice blocks. However, remember, this is just for the normal game mode. Other modes he could very well successfully excel in. Rosalina's dice block has plus two coins, plus two coins, two, three, four, and eight. Our first dice block that has coin bonuses. Huh. Now instead of moving, you gain the indicated amount of coins. However, when you gain these coins, you do move a total of zero spaces, if that's your only roll. So Rosalina here has two stalls with an added bonus, along with some pretty high numbered numbers. Her mean roll, though, is 2.83 with a standard deviation of 2.73, so not too great. She could move well, if you're lucky, and roll pretty well, and the two stalls could come in handy. But overall, she doesn't really move as much as you'd expect. Now, something I haven't talked about is how cheap the stars are in Super Mario Party. Only 10 coins compared to previous Mario Party's 20! Now, it's not hard to gain coins anymore, as almost every minigame gives you two even if you lose, and ten if you win, so it isn't difficult to get stars, but stealing stars is pretty pricey of a business. That's where the real competition is. At 30 coins, you can steal a star. And you can do it whenever you cross by the right spot on the map. So, as long as you can afford it, one rotation of the map means you can steal a star. Anyway, Rosalina's dice block. 
While not great, it does land her in C tier. Shy Guy's dice block has 0, 4, 4, 4, 4, and 4. Okay, so I absolutely love that his dice block is basically 4 with a single stall. Meaning that he will eventually get whatever he wants, eventually. As long as what he wants is a deviation of 4. However, he's unable to get those interesting odd number spaces, um, but of course you can always switch over to the normal dice block, but still, his main dice block will not allow him to land on odd number spaces. So it's pretty safe when it comes to being even, with a mean roll of, you guessed it, 3.33. Ha, <laughs> what? No, that's right, because remember, zero means no movement. It's quite the big outlier compared to all the fours. But his standard deviations are now the second lowest at 1.43. So that's good. All in all though, this gives him a D on our tier list. Never really fast, but not slow enough for it to count. Hmm. Koopa Troopa's dice block has 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, and 10. Interesting. And at the first time, we see a 10. It was quite interesting to see that Bowser's minions are all quite unique characters, with many different cute little dialogue quirks with each other and other players. His dice, however, not so great. With a mean roll of 3.33 and standard deviation of 3.09, so a pretty inaccurate reading to be honest, but hey, that's what happens when your die is mainly garbage numbers and then one god tier number. Which is why he is an F tier. Drybone's dice block has 111666. Oh, spoiler alert? Does anyone care about Mario Party spoilers? But I mean, if you didn't already notice, being a total tier list, we're going to have to add in the unlockable characters. So first up is Drybones, with his very evenly split die, giving easy access to both even and odd number layouts, as well as almost stalls. With a mean roll of 3.5 and a standard deviation of 2.0, it's a really solid die, landing him right into A tier. Really, he's pretty good. Plus, it always feels fun to just play as a skeleton, so bonus points for that. Waluigi's dice block has negative three coins, one, three, five, five, seven. So we've got some good sides here. Essentially a better Luigi. Well, in theory anyway. We get a stall, but at a decent cost of three coins. But we also have more higher numbers, like the fives instead of the threes. Meaning his mean roll is 3.5 with a standard deviation of 2.43. So actually not better than Luigi's speed. But the stall is pretty helpful again, landing Waluigi at B, right behind Luigi. Did I call him Waluigi? Monty Mole's dice block is plus one coin, two, three, four, five, six. Essentially the normal die, but instead of a worthless one, it's a stall with a coin get. So his die is pretty good. With a mean roll of 3.33 and a standard deviation of 1.97, he's pretty accurate, but he really lacks any special tricks to help him win any games. So. We're gonna put him into like high C tier, essentially just above the normal dice block. Goomba's dice block has plus two coins, plus two coins, three, four, five, six. Kind of a curve ball in terms of what I was thinking he'd have. I thought he'd have more negatives, but his die is actually pretty decent with a mean roll of 3.0 and a standard deviation of 2.31, putting him into low B tier. Pom Pom's dice block has zero, three, 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 eight. Another curve ball, as in, why is this character even in the game? I mean, I guess they couldn't have Bullet Bill play because he's in some of the mini games, along with Spike. So, to fill the roster, it's Pom Pom, I guess. More girls. There you go. She has a very three heavy die. Decent utility in its high rolls, but low chance for events. With a mean of 3.33 and standard deviation of 2.36, she really can either move a lot or not moving her into B tier. Wario's dice block is negative two coins, negative two coins, six, 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 six. Oh boy, what can I even say here? He's a greedy guy. A greedy S tier guy, that is. The payoff for his negative is pretty great. In this new Mario Party formula where the board is much smaller, the, the, your movement is all about going quickly or stalling. And quickly moving around the board will be a little bit better for the most part. Because you can run around, get more coins, get more items, get more special events, because you're running constantly everywhere. And when you include allies and items, Wario can easily get 15 plus rolls regularly. With a mean roll of four, he's a fast character. 
and a standard deviation of only 2.85 means he isn't too far off from characters of average speed. Hence, why he is definitely an S tier. Bowser Jr. has 111449. So after the wondrous Wario's dice block, we come to this thing. Ugh. While not terrible, it lacks a few things, but a mean roll is pretty average at 3.33 with a normal standard deviation of 2.87. Essentially, he's pretty similar to Mario's die, except that he could in some games perform worse or better. It really comes down to luck here landing him in B tier, just like Mario. Bowser's dice block has negative three coins, negative three coins, one, eight, nine, and 10. Now, his die may seem pretty risky, and well, that's because it is, but with a mean roll of 4.67, but a very, very high standard deviation of 4.38, Bowser can either be your angel or your devil, a truly risky die to use. However, this risk is very worth it, as he can easily roll higher than the average, and can easily get you stalled however much you really want. At a decently pricey amount, three coins. But even with all of these negatives, I can see Bowser easily being an A or even S tier. Boo's dice block has negative two coins, negative two coins, five, five, seven, and seven. I wonder why Boo likes the numbers five and seven. It may have something to do with ghost myths or something. I'll have to look into that later. But for now, Boo's mean of 4 with a standard deviation of 2.94 puts him in a very good spot. Again, much like Bowser, possibly being another S tier character. Hammer Bros dice block has plus 3 coins, 1, 1, 1, 5, and 5. A welcomed addition to the Bowser team, Hammer Bros dice block is a bit of a risk reward system too. Ones can be devastating, it's true, but one is very easy to overcome with how easy it is to get items and allies. Hammer Bros mean of 2.83 and standard deviation of 2.19 means he's not going to win no race, but he will at least place on the tier list, right with his Koopa brothers in F tier. Lovely. Donkey Kong's dice block. Uh, it's plus five coins, zero, zero. Zero, 10 and 10. Oh man, the king of the jungle has got some crazy ideas for dice. No wonder he wasn't allowed to play until recently. But this huge discrepancy is quite odd. It still has a mean of 3.33, the same as Daisy, so he is still very viable. However, this standard deviation is almost at five with 4.71. Now, number wise, this ain't great. It's not that great of a thing. But in actual game, the standard deviation tends to go up more than down due to the, all the factors I've explained before, such as items, special spots on the board, all that stuff. It also seems like, at least every time I play, DK always gets way lucky all the time. Hmm. But even without this magical luck, DK lands himself right into S tier, just due to his absolute crazy mobility and ability to stall as well. It's the best of both worlds. If you can really time your dice block punches, it's perfect. And finally, the last character that no one really cares for. Diddy Kong's dice block has 0, 0, 0, 7, 7, 7. The kid cousin of DK has some lucky triple seven dice, which is not entirely good. In fact, I'm just gonna spill the beans and say he's in C tier with a mean of 3.5 and a standard deviation of exactly the same, 3.5. It's almost entirely 50-50 as to whether or not you are going to move. Now, this dice mixed with the mother's dice is a really great power to have, much like being able to use Shy Guy's dice if you really need four. It's just a situation requirement. And with that, we now have our tier list. Here it is, throw it up on screen. Wow, tier list. And of course, this is just as the game is now, as it's launched. They may treat this a bit like Mario Tennis and add more characters, maybe even boards along the way. But for now, here you go. Hope I didn't miss anything. If you have any Mario Party strategies that you use, could you let me know down in the description? I really need to get back at my friend Chad, who's just way good about the whole tactical aspect of Mario Party. I will show him someday. This discussion actually goes pretty deep. So let me know your strategies. And remember, this is just in normal board game mode. Star mode could have an entirely different tier list as the rules are quite a bit different. Anyway, let me know down in the comments and until next time, never stop utilizing that noggin to 
analyze a Mario party game to the point where you are just never gonna play Koopa again because he sucks. Stupid turtle. <laughs>